guys. You guys don't know me, I'm Mike Rode. I've been working here at PSU for working here for a while. I figure I figure we go around the room and have everybody introduce a, have a, introduce themselves and give us a little tidbit about themselves. No. That's a little inside joke. That's an inside joke there for the guys that went to TOGAF training. Um, what we're going to talk about is TOGAF version uh, 9.1. Um, it's the what we'll do is we'll do an overview, um, part one, the introduction, and we'll go we'll go into more depth about the uh, TOGAF 9.1 standard. Um, TOGAF, what it stands for is the Open Group Architecture Framework. Um, it's, uh, we're going to go into uh, what is the enterprise architecture, what are some of the architecture types that are out there, and the benefits of enterprise architecture, just as a quick overview and introduction. Um, the Open Group is a, is just like Mahmoud said, group that's trying to get standards across all, all tiers of organizations, big and small. Um, so they're building up standards, they're trying to follow st certain specifications, and they're trying to involve and encompass all of these other paradigms. You heard Mahmoud mention um, ITIL, um, there's COBIT, and there's a couple other different um, specifications that, and frameworks that, that lend itself towards TOGAF, and TOGAF allows for us to incorporate those within it. Um, enterprise architecture, I mean, you probably heard, heard me chime in on it a lot of times when we were, when we were doing tech assessments or anything. It's about building um, business processes and common building blocks that we can leverage across um, systems. Um, in, a try, in an effort to try and help reduce um, development effort, shorten time to delivery. So TOGAF is a blueprint to help with that, with that process. Architecture types, I mean, you'll hear us talking about, you know, if some of you've probably heard Sundeep, Jennifer, uh, Tom, Judy, or I talking about, you know, A, B, C, D. You'll, you'll, you'll basically understand what some of that stuff means later on. Uh, but the major ar architecture types is business architecture, you know, the people, the business processes, all of that type of stuff that, that's a critical to get the, the job at hand done for the business side of things. Um, the other side of it is application architecture. You know, we're building up services. Are we building up a common infrastructure for us to leverage across all of these applications? Are we, are we building a cross-cutting um, domain solution versus building our own little independent silo? Um, Data architecture, this kind of goes into the uh, enterprise information model, logical data models. Are we leveraging logical data models? Are we building up infrastructures that we can leverage across all of these applications? Uh, case in point, CU Scripter and CallPro3. We still haven't data done and gone through a data unification process. I mean, that would fall in this area. What is it going to take to hey, make that happen? Um, and then the technology architecture is really like infrastructure, servers, uh, network routers, hubs, all that type of stuff. Okay. Um, the benefits of enterprise architecture, um, I kind of went through some of them already, but I'll go through them. It's going to be about business, it's going to be about IT, um, about investment decisions and uh, procurement of third party uh, products. Uh, for the business, the, the thought process is that so we can deliver something to them and give them a, an environment where they can make decisions and make stand up something quick. You know, we need, they need to be agile, they need to be flexible, they need to have some, an environment that they can, they can handle and leverage. So that's one of the benefits of enterprise architecture, is we're standing up systems that can, that can be leveraged across the organization, and we could do concepts like mashups and stuff like that. Um, for IT, I mean, this is pretty simple. I mean, I, I would argue that this is like a resource thing. You know, we get everybody trained on this is the way we do it, this is the, way we, this is the standard process for developing applications, either jo jo um, Java or .NET. And then we all kind of fall in line with that versus us building our own implementation and following our own different standards, the, uh, our, our own silos. Uh, the problem is, is you, can't, you can't leverage that resource from one project to the next if you're using different technologies. And it makes it difficult for the company, PSCU, to move forward. Uh, the other thing is the thought process is uh, procurement of third-party products. Uh, one of the, pro the historical things at, at PSCU is we, we, we just buy best of breed or we go out and we buy an appliance, or we buy this, or we buy that, and we just throw it in there. The problem is, is what this process is going to allow, uh, what enterprise architecture helps with, is the procurement of these third-party vendors. And we'll go into more detail there as on the process for procuring third-party. So now we'll get into the details of the TOGAF. What, what we kind of already done is, you've noticed on the first slide, I said part one, which is introduction. Uh, really, that's kind of like the preface, the, the core concepts of TOGAF, and we review what that all the introduction of what TOGAF is about, what the benefits are, some of the, some of the reasons for having TOGAF in place. Um, the next part is part two, which is the uh, architecture development method, which is the ADM, which, you've, which will be the ABCD thing. Um, the ADM guidelines, I'll, I'll go into more detail. Architecture contact framework, the enterprise continuum and tools, um, the reference models, and the architecture capability framework. 
for some drawings that, that you'll probably see throughout the slide deck. And this shows a representation of what each one of these, um, each one of these major parts is. I mean, it doesn't show intro, but uh, it shows the ADM, the architecture contact frameworks, reference models, ADM guidelines and techniques, enterprise continuum, and the, and the, arch and the architecture <coughs> capability frame. Um, the first part is the uh, ADM. Um, the ADM is the core um, portion of TOGAF. It's, 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 the, it's the essence of TOGAF in, in, at, at all levels of, of PSU's organization or at any organization. The preliminary phase is that, that that's like the first phase of this, um, of, the, um, of the architecture development method. Um, and this is really an iterative process. So like phase, phase A is the architecture vision. So what would happen is we would come in and there would be some type of request. We need to make a change to this environment, our, our PSU environment. So the first step would be, okay, well, let's start gathering some information. Let's get a statement of work built up. Let's understand what, what this environment, what this change impact is gonna be. The next phase is um, business architecture. Um, what's the business architecture involved around this, on this specific solution or uh, implementation that we're trying to get to? Um, phase C is information system architecture. This is, this is around application and information um, architectures, which you saw on a previous slide. The technology architecture is uh, just that, the, the uh, infrastructure. And opportunities and solutions. This is where a lot of a lot of stuff will get generated from based on that. So there's, um, this is where we're actually doing some level of analysis on our current environment and saying, hey, we have an opportunity or here's a new solution. Some of that stuff might come out of there and then we, we start a whole new ADM process again from there. Migration planning, uh, that's the kind of like it says is what is it gonna take to get us from point A to point B with that solution. The um, implementation of governance, the governance board, um, some of you may have heard of it off and on. There's an oversight team. I would argue that's the start of the uh, governance board. And that the intent is, is that's gonna be where we kind of review what the different technologies are coming into PSEU and making sure that they conform to what our architecture standards are across the company. The architecture change management. I would argue in my mind, as Mahmoud said, that this is really ITIL right here. H and E is ITIL, the way I understand it. And uh, that's, where we're that's where the changes come in. Like we need a, cha we need a quick change. Uh, I think Arvin had some, some slides where he talked about low level of effort, medium level effort, high level of effort. Depending on that type of level of effort that comes out of this architecture change management, this ITIL group um, may kick off another ADM cycle for these projects. And the requirements management, that, that's just the central repository for all the documentation. For each one of those phases, there's there specific inputs and outputs at each one of those phases. So there's, there's a list of, uh, well, I'll go into it later, but there's a list of documentation that we need to generate at each phase of the ADM cycle. And then this is, this is a specific, if, if you're taking the test, you need to know this. Um, this is, each one of the documents are version labeled in a certain order. The ADM guidelines is, this kind of goes back to the original slide, which we talked about part one, part two. Now we're at, we're at part three, which is the ADM guidelines. And what the ADM guidelines is, is the, uh, is the instruction, it's like, kind of like the instruction of the user's guide for the uh, ADM. You go in there, you go in there and find out, okay, for phase, phase B, here's the type of inputs, here's the type of processes, this is the, st the steps for setting up, um, requesting information, here's the outputs for this section. And you know, that's what they expected, here's some templates that we can follow and stuff like that. So the ADM is a guideline and techniques for implementing the ADM process. So guidelines for adapting the ADM process, there's always a, there's a ways to apply it. It's an iterative, definitely. Um, it's at, it, the ADM is at different levels of the organization. Um, I think there's another slide coming up that talks about that. Um, security considerations for, for each different phases. I got, got cut off. And it supports <coughs> SOA as well. There's a whole section in TOGAF, which we didn't go over in class, so um, if you have questions about it, we'll have to take it offline. Part of the ADM, guidelines and techniques is, is here's a list of techniques for gathering information. One of them is the uh, architecture principles, which is, which is something I think that PSCU should probably embrace and, and, and start referencing and maybe build up our own principles here at PSCU. Um, later on, and I think a couple slides down, we talked, uh, the group that went to TOGAF training, we kind of said, let's get together and define some principles and I included those in the, in the slide deck. Stakeholder management, architecture patterns, business scenarios. This one's pretty big. Um, I can't remember the acronym. Specific, measurable, actionable, 
I don't remember. Um, I'll have to look it up again. I, I got that answer right on the test. I, <laughs> I think. Um, gap analysis, this one's big, right? I mean, gap analysis, the, 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 the thought process there is you have to have a current state and a future state, and then you can figure out what the gaps are uh, with that, and or you have a capabilities list of here's what we're looking for, for functionality, here's what this product has to offer, what's the gap assessment there? Yeah, you're right, Real, realistic and time bound, yes, good job. Um, migra migration planning techniques, um, interoperability requirements. You know, this one, this one's kind of big here at PSU. Is the is the is the business transformation readiness assessment? Is PSU ready for this type of change? We don't know. I don't think we do enough of that. Um, and capability, you know, based planning. All right, next. Here's one of the business principles: uh, compliance with law. This is Fed regs. We gotta, you know, one of our principles is we have to comply with Fed regs. So, I mean, this was a good principle. This is one of the, the uh, <coughs> core toe gap principles. This is number uh, seven. Uh, what we did is we, we uh, captured a principle from each. Uh, data principles. Uh, this one's pretty near and dear and a, and, a, and a pain in my butt at PSCU. We don't have a common vocabulary and data dictionary, data definitions across the organization. You can ask one person, what's the user ID in this table? Um, well, it, it's this number for this person, it's this number for this person in this app, and it's this number in this person for this app. So this goes back to the whole data unification. Master data management, I think this is, this is key to help PSU get move forward with all of these as we integrate all these other applications. Application principle, uh, technology independence. Um, this, is, this is a case where we can, you know, this is, this is SOA, you know, this is, this is build up web services so we can use them on any, any brick, bring your own device type of technology, you know, thought process so we can call and leverage these web services. Technology principles, interoperability. This is uh, just ensuring consistency across the infrastructure, make sure we're, we're the same across the board. This is not having five different versions of JBoss out there. Here's, a here's, here's another flow of the uh, ADM guidelines and techniques. As you can see that there's a strategic architecture there's an ADM fr flow for the strategic ar architecture, which flows into the segments, which flows into the capabilities. So really at TOGAF, we can do TOGAF at any given level of PSU's organization. So I would argue that if you have the opportunity, I would be running some level of TOGAF on your projects as well to gather all the proper documentation and put it into the requirements um, management area. The, um, the architecture context framework this is a significant part of the TOGAF framework. Um, where we store a lot of the, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, this is where we store a lot of the uh, architecture um, artifacts. And here's the different work products that we create. The deliverables, the artifacts, and the building blocks is all in contained in the architecture contact framework. Um, and here's the different types of segments of it, you know, data entities, logical components. You know, this is, this is the information system. And you see it, it's broken out into the data and the application, uh, technology, platform.